Hi, we are so happy that you are here to join us. How many of us have had cares and anxieties when we go to bed at night, sometimes affecting our sleep? Perhaps thinking of a situation at work in which we have not found a solution to? A deadline which is fast approaching, but for some reason, you are stuck in your tracks. For students, perhaps you have had submitted your assignment or completed an examination paper, but you are just not sure what the outcome would be. These are all cares and worries, but the Lord wants to give rest to His children. That's who we are, His beloved. He wants us to have peace. We're going to look at 1 Peter 5, 7. Um, here it shows us how we can cast our cares to our Lord. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all of your concerns once and for all on Him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Right? The Lord cares so much and so deeply for us. That's why he says that even the hairs on our heads are numbered. Right? That's from Matthew 10, 30. So casting all your cares. Here it says all, right? All, not some, but all, entirely. Casting, when you cast something, you're actually letting go of ownership. Right? Some people call it surrender. We give it all entirely to God. Okay, let me give you an example. I believe many of us have had actually um, experienced similar situations. Where I was working on a problem at work, spending lots of time and resources trying to solve it, right? even till after midnight. As humans are, sometimes we forget God, right? Because of pride, we choose our, to use our own self-effort until we are drained and full of anxiety. Right at the point, I finally say, Lord, I'm tired. I can't do it anymore. So you help me, right? This is your problem now, not my problem, right? And I sleep. And the next morning, the solution was right before my eyes. The worry and anxiety was actually wasted energy, right? In hindsight, when we think about it, if I had just come down and prayed for wisdom and cast the problem to God, I would have saved myself from the anxiety perhaps even found a solution earlier on. Just to be clear, right, we still work hard, but we co-labor with God. We bring Him into our lives, right? bring Him into our situations. Now, we know that the Lord cares about us with deep affection, right? deep affection, that means so much. He is our Creator. He can do an infinitely better job compared to us. After we have cast our cares to God, we also want to turn our eyes and be thankful to Him, as thankfulness is an expression of worship. In Philippians 4, 6-7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything or every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Right? When Paul wrote Philippians, he was actually in prison. What's more distressing than being chained 24-7, being stuck in a dungeon, losing all your freedom? That's where Paul was. But there is, no, there is one thing circumstances cannot do. It cannot stop us from worshipping our God. We have a choice when we go through life. As the saying goes, we look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Both have the same level of water, but it's our perspective. We can either complain about the challenges we are facing or thank God for the good that He has done. There's always something that we can actually thank God for. For example, we can't afford to dine in a Michelin star restaurant yet. I say yet, huh? because most of us, we have a desire, I believe. right? In the right time, God will grant us our desires. But we can thank Him now, for we have food on the table each day, not needing to go hungry. We might not be a senior manager at our company, at work, but we can still thank God. We have a job to live a comfortable life. And that is the greatest gift that we can be eternally grateful to God for. Right? He gave us Jesus Christ to be crucified on the cross that we might be reconciled back to the Father and have everlasting life. We should be contented, but not complacent because God has far greater things for us. He wants us to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Right? God knows our future. 
And this is what he says about our future in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Do you know that trying to take control of the future is what causes worry and anxiety? Because we can't control the future. Okay, so how do we sometimes try to control the future? Don't misunderstand me. I believe that planning is very important. But some of us take it too far and analyze ourselves into depression, overthinking the worst case scenario, bringing in fear. We know that our future is secure in Christ. Okay, let's take a look at Lamentations 3, 22 to 25. Lamentations was actually written, uh, most people say, by Jeremiah during when the people of God were in Babylonian captivity. It was a really tough time, but in the midst of the sorrow, the writer remembers the goodness of God, His mercies, His compassion, and His faithfulness. Lamentations 3 verse 22, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great! is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. God is merciful to us. And mercy here is hesed, which is the New Testament equivalent of grace. Of course, grace is unmerited favor, but also it is His enabling, right? He gives us grace each new day. So live one day at a time, knowing that um, each new day, there is new grace. And when the writer of Lamentations says that the Lord is our portion, portion means one's portion, one's possession, or one's share. So who is the one here? The one here is actually God. And God's portion, God's possession, and God's share. And we know that God is infinitely big. He is our portion, right? It means that He is our inheritance. He is sharing everything He has with us. God says that all I have is yours, which means that we have so much. Therefore, we need not worry about the future because our hope is not like how the world sees hope, right? merely as a wish. But our hope is different. It is in Christ Jesus. It is certain, unshakable. It is a positive expectation of good things to come. Why can we be so sure of this, that our future is good and certain? Because God is faithful. What he has promised in his word, he is faithful to fulfill it. So, we start each morning by spending time with God. Read your Bible, pray, talk to him. If you have not, perhaps start with 5 to 10 minutes. Read a few verses of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Seek him. And every night before you retire to bed, cast your cares unto God. Thank him for the good that has happened during the day. He loves to have an intimate relationship with us. Matthew 6, 34. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Take one day at a time. Don't bring your worries to bed. There is new grace for each new day. We can be sure of His mercies are new every morning. Why? Because we are His children. Jesus Christ has given His life for us. Surely no good thing he will withhold from us. Let us come now to the Lord's table. When we partake of communion, remember the goodness of God and what he has done on the cross for us. Father, we want to thank you for what you have done for us on the cross. Through your body broken, we have healing. We have taken away all our iniquities. Through your stripes, we have been healed. The Lord Jesus Christ said, This is my body, broken for you. Thank you, Come. And through the blood of Christ shed on the cross, we have complete forgiveness of sins. With complete forgiveness of sins, we can approach the throne room of grace with confidence because the Lamb of God has been crucified. And Father, I want to thank you for what you have done on the cross, your blood shed for us. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Thank you, Jesus.
I want to pray for those who are broken hearted. In Psalms 147, the psalmist writes that he heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. And those who are broken hearted want to pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for those who's, who have been hurt, whose heart has been broken. Father, we thank you that you are God who binds up the wounds. You are God who heals. Father, I want to thank you that you heal those who have been hurt. Weep no more, for a new day is coming. Right? God is healing every wound. And also I want to pray for physical healing. Place your hand on wherever um, you feel that is infirm. God is ready to heal. It is part of our inheritance in Christ Jesus, which he has purchased for us. Through his stripes, you were healed. And Father, I want to thank you for healing. You have, you have said that through your stripes, we were healed. What you have done on the cross, what you have done at Calvary, you have purchased healing for us. We want to declare healing on all infirmity. We want to thank you, God. And Lord also says that He's going to restore the years the locusts have eaten. Sometimes we have wasted time because of the mistake. But God says, move forward, look forward, turn to Christ, turn to Jesus. He is the ultimate restorer. When some has lost finances, God says He's going to restore. Sometimes it may not be restoration, just finances, but God says He knows what you need. He is your shepherd and He knows all your needs. We have no lack because Jesus knows our needs. But He is going to restore your finances and whatever you have lost. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His countenance towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, Amen.